Hello everybody and welcome back to our fourth lecture and I hope you're getting a lot of information becoming more knowledgeable in programming and before I start in this lecture I just want to um, give some advice to um, following students who are w watching that you have to always practice if you just watch these videos but you're not practicing it's not going to do any good because programming is exactly the same as math. The more you practice, the more you will improve. So this is just an advice to me that after watching these videos, um, I'd suggest going on Google and trying to find some problems and that way it actually can increase your knowledge and then you find these concepts which you once thought were complex, now as simple. Okay? And the reason I'm saying this is because in this lecture, we're going to talk about dictionaries, and dictionaries, in my opinion, can be maybe one of the most complex um, topics for beginner programming. So let's get to it. I'm going to, I'll try my best to make it as simple as possible, don't worry. <laughs> so a dic every dictionary in Python has a key and a value. So let's forget about that for a minute, and imagine you're looking for the word aircraft in a dictionary. So the key of the dictionary is aircraft. You search through it and then suddenly you find the definition of aircraft. But what is the definition exactly? It's the value of your key. So you find aircraft and then it defines a flying object. That's exactly how Python dictionaries work because you have a key and a value. So for example, we have a variable dictionary, and I set it equal to a dictionary structure, where you have three different items, each with a key and a value. So for example, here, hello is your key, and the value of hello is two. Here you have check, its value is three. One is a key, its value is four. So this is basically the first step of understanding dictionaries. You can access a dictionary, and it's actually easy to do so. So, for example, you have the variable search, and then you have Mercury, Venus, and Earth, which are all um, keys, and they all they each have a value representing their uh, position in our solar system. So, if you want to get the keys of the dictionary or the items, you can just say search dot items. Dot items is basically a function that will give you the keys of the dictionary. If you want to access a value, for example, let's say you want to access the value of Venus. So you can just say search, since search is our variable, uh, square brackets, and this time we are not dealing with um, indexes, we are dealing with the keys. We're, we're dealing with what the key actually is. So if I say search of Venus, that will basically return to, because you are specifying the exact key that you want the um, value of. Dictionaries are immutable structures, meaning that you can actually change them, because they act in a very similar manner to lists. The only difference between a dictionary and a list is that a list has just one, um, one data per, um, how can I say this? It's like a dictionary just contains a number of data. But here, a dictionary has a number of data, but each data has a key and a value. So for example, if I want to change the value of hey, so you have hey and its value is two, all I can do is just say look, since look is our variable here, of square brackets hey, I'm specifying what key I want to change its value of, and I can say equals to five. So now, this 2 will be cancelled, and then you will have a 5 replaced. Let's look at another example where we have a nested dictionary, which is variable look2. So I have two keys, which are James and Air. But James' value is a dictionary. That's the thing. It's not, a, it's not like a number in our previous example of look. So let's say I want to change... I want to change the 2 of hello to 5. Now that can be actually tricky. All you have to do is just say look to of James, since you are 
basically accessing the first key of hello and then you set it equal to 5. Why? Because you're accessing two keys simultaneously. You first access James, which basically gives you access to the entire dictionary of James, and then you access hello, which is a key within that nested dictionary. And that's basically it about dictionaries. There are a lot, a lot of things you can actually do with dictionaries. You can store... Um, dictionaries actually can be used um, for sports programming because you can um, try to calculate a team's uh, score, for example, and then you can compare that with another team. Um, I remember doing that for a programming uh, assignment. Um, you can do multiple things with dictionaries. They can come in very handy, especially if you have um, many different um, variables or data information that you want to keep track of. So I suggest try and do some practice. And our next lesson is going to be if, elf, else. But I just want you to feel com comfortable before going to that by doing some examples with dictionaries. So I have a variable tup. And it has two keys, which are E and R. E has value 1, R has value 4. So if I say print tup of E, that's basically going to access E, which should return back 1. So let's print it. Exactly. You see here? It returns back 1. But let's see, by the way, this is a comment. I'm going to go into comments in another lecture, but anything that has a hashtag means a comment, so it's basically useless for now. But let's say I remove this comment, and I say top of E equals to 2. Look what's going to happen. When I print top of E, it's going to equal to 2 because I have updated the list. So you can just try playing around. Um, doing different things with dictionaries. You can tr try to even search for dictionary methods. And once you're confident, you can continue on if, else, else. All right, stay tuned. Thank you very much.